right, everybody, welcome back to Making It Fun. I am your host, Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, and I'm super excited to see all of you out there on the other side of the camera, but you have got to meet my special guest. Talk about incredible. This gal is a pattern partner extraordinaire, designer of the world. I mean, this is Charisma Horton. Come on! Yay! Yay! This is I'm so excited to be here and sh sharing this time with Rob and we are going to share some tutorials with you for eight months. You have us all getting ready for the glam 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 of fabulous. It's an eight series block of the month and there's monthly handouts in the pattern that break down each month into eight parts that are easy to construct and give you the pattern requirements. So part of that is that we used Michael Miller Basics, yay, because they're the best. And we used Coco because, you know, Coco is just classy and fabulous, like the Chanel. And we used Hashtag and a little bit of Cotton Couture because Couture is just fabulous. Mm -hmm. So. Could have said it better myself. Yeah. And it's fun to see the way, actually, even if the black, I know you can see the quilt stitching, but the black is actually that hash dot print as well that you can see right here. And it's got that neat, deep texture. And that's one of the things I love about Charisma's work. Not only the way she puts the color together, but she uses different textures and solids to give a lot of impact. So this is super exciting. Um, and then something else that really personal for me, uh, not only did Charisma and I get to meet uh, a while ago and start working on projects like this together, but I really am into learning. Learning. And so whenever I'm working on a project like this, I make parts and pieces so that I'm really in understanding. And this is a fantastic, I mean, a fabulous pattern. And it's really great, really easy to understand. And I learned several tricks. Now, one of the ones I want to share with all of you before we dive into the instructions today is that there are a couple of different ways that you're going to be able to get your fabrics. Now, we need you to purchase the pattern. This is a support charisma, support your local quilt shops, your online retailers with purchasing the pattern, and you'll get all of the instructions. But you might get them in different formulas. So we will take it slowly and do once a month for you. But the other thing that I'm really excited about is in the first few pages of the instructions are some awesome cutting tips and how to maximize your fabric. So if you're not like me and you don't want scrap, I just make a mess. You've seen me do this, right? But I mean, that's correct. So if you love to just take on every little piece of fabric or you like to have a lot of scraps, either way, you'll be able to do that. The other nice thing about these blocks are that they are familiar blocks that we all know and mm -hmm. love. They're just recolored in a fresh new way so that you don't you won't feel intimidated by continuing this project. And so this is block one, this is Eleanor, and we'll have a little story for you about Eleanor later, but we're calling block one Eleanor. You wanna show us how to build out uh, block one Eleanor as yes, well? Yes, okay. absolutely. So here we have our squares. We have our big square and our little square of our black and white, and then the colors. We have eight colors for you to build out this quilt and it's a rainbow of color and they're super fabulous so here we're going to start and you'll see that you have the quarter square triangles here and there is an absolute definite orientation to these blocks so you have to make sure that the colors are where they are supposed to be and all of that information is in your pattern so what we're going to do is we are going to cut our black and white squares on the diagonal. Oh, Chris, but can I point out also to the folks at home, we have two different size squares. We're keeping the math to ourselves to protect the innocent, but we're gonna call these large and small squares. Today, both of these squares are just cut one time, but some of the patterns will have your squares cut both diagonals to form four triangles instead of two. So that's right. The white one was a small, the black one was a big, <laughs> for, yeah. for purposeful lack of better term. Yes. <laughs> And so now what we're going to do is we know that according to the pattern, the blue and the purple uh, quarter square triangles are going on the right side. So we want to make sure when we sew these that we are sewing the blue and purple colored triangle on the right side. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to line those up and then I'm going to run this through my sewing machine. Do you have any tips on how you like to sew triangles together? I do. So I would like to do this with the triangle side rather than the tip side mm -hmm. so that I don't stretch any bias. Rad, that looks great. You 
Looking right. good. Now we have our quarter square triangle and Rob is going to press to the dark side. Ooh, I get a project, I get a job. So yes. I'm just gonna hold that dark fabric up in the air, right? Is what you yep. want me to do? I'm yep. setting that seam, okay. And while he's doing that, I'm going to sew our purple one again to the right side. Are we looking, boss? It's looking good. Press to the dark side. Okay. And then I am going to take our quarter square triangle and I am going to sew it to our big black half square triangle here. It's the hash dot creates such a great texture. And while she's getting ready to do that, I'm going to point out that we both realized we had the same habit, which is we like our solid piece when possible to be on the feed dogs of the machine instead of the parts that have the seam. It just makes it so you're not sewing against that seam blindly. So I'll set this up for her. While she's getting that all set up, I double check my work, make sure I have it the way you want, Charisma. Yep, it looks great. Great, okay. I just need to adjust the triangle as I go. Okay, now how do we like these pressed? Also, we the dark want side? pressed to the dark side. We got it. And actually, this works out in two reasons, or in our favor for two reasons. One, because we don't want the dark fabric to bleed through the light fabric. That's why we keep seeing pressed to the dark side. That's the English I was looking for a moment ago. However, we also, when possible, like to press to the unpatchwork piece because this patchwork seam here is going to want to fight against it. So we're just laying straight and that's just going to help for accuracy for any of you maybe intermediate quilters that are practicing growing your skill set. Uh, you know, we like to speak to the beginners, the intermediates and the advances if, <laughs> if I ever get there. Sorry. And also to help your long arm quilter, you will want to trim these little dog ears on the side from mm -hmm. what is created when you sew um, half square triangles. So. Just a little pro tip there from a long arm quilter. That's right. Makes it a little, little easier. I'm hoping I can get some extra pro tips while you're here in town. You think I can uh, rent a few tips while you're in, in town right. or be like that? Yes. That's great. Okay, now I'm also taking a moment, a uh, little disorganized style because I was having fun, wasn't paying attention, but I'm putting the uh, half the completed blocks up on the wall so you once again can see the orientation the color uh, library we have going here for you and you want to make sure that you have your printed fabrics on the correct side of the blocks because charisma will you show everybody in, where they find them in the quilt here so this is the base of our star and that's why you need to make sure that these colors fall in the orientation that is written in the pattern so that they line up perfectly where they're supposed to be because there's um, the same thing repeated here. And so you want those to line up. You can see that the red and the orange, the purple and the pink are all sort of, it's a design opportunity. So I've got a confession to make. When I started in on my sample pieces, I called Charisma a little concerned because her uh, beautiful, fabulous icon on the pattern is actually uh, repeated in all of the different months on the blocks. It is the center you see here. But we remember started on these bigger outside blocks. And so as I was cutting down the pieces, I was scratching my head thinking, I don't think I have all the right size pieces. So I called Charisma and said, Charisma, what am I doing wrong? And you said? I said, that's just the icon for the quilt, Rob. <laughs> that's, they're all the same on every block. So we decided that we would name these blocks a specific name. And we sort of went through some ideas of how we were going to do that. But what we de decided is that we would name each block after an iconic quilter. And the very first iconic quilter that came to the top of our list was Eleanor Burns. And so for me, Eleanor is really pivotal because 
the very first quilt that I made that I felt like I was, you know, an actual quilter, I felt so accomplished was a quilt from her book called Still Stripping After 25 Years. And so I um, had the hardbound version. I would take it on car trips with me. I would just look through that book all the time, dreaming about all of the um, quilts in that book. I just loved how she made it so simple and easy for me to understand. And so that was really my first, you know, story with Eleanor Burns. And I think everybody has an Eleanor Burns story. And so does Rob. Of course, you can see my uh, very special uh, treasure here. This, um, and I'll make it short. I just really want to say uh, to Eleanor and Grant and Orion, you know, a family that quilts together stays together. And obviously this is a very special piece of Eleanor Burns history. If you don't know, one of her sons also makes skateboards. And there were only, I believe, two or three of these boards made. And I still have mine, Eleanor. I promised I would never get rid of it. It's right here. So Eleanor, thank you for being such a huge inspiration to all of us quilters That's over right. all of the years and I just charisma what a great idea you had in in honoring our our heritage uh in, in coming up with it. so I just want to say uh, thank you to Eleanor and again thank you to charisma this and, is fabulous <laughs> and thank you to Rob for having me today yeah. Oh, wonderful okay so with that said I guess we got a little starstruck seeing Eleanor here uh in <laughs> wood and in person and all of that. We will see all of you in a month with the second installment of Fabulous Block Number Two. We won't tell you the name yet. Keep you guessing on that. And we will see you also every other week with some sort of fun, entertaining, possibly educational video right here at Making It Fun. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. <laughs> I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.